Closed captioning for Ciao Italia was provided by a grant from the Order Sons of Italy in America. Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito, and welcome to Tuscany. Allora, chin chin. Chin chin. Woo, I thought we were going to Hoboken for sure. Yeah. Don't worry about your fingers, look at mine. This is as good as it gets when it comes to country food. That look pretty? Looks like a little flower vase. Yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna really melt nicely. You can't get anything fresher than a plum from a plum tree. This looks like you came out of a, a pastry shop. Mmm, that looks great. Isn't this easy? So pretty. Who's not gonna want to eat this pizza? And you're good to go with dough. Did I make a poem? I think I did. Every time I make this, I think of mom. Ciao! Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by... In Norwich, we sure like to bake. It's the home of King Arthur Flour, and we believe in baking with only the finest all-natural ingredients. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. The College of Culinary Arts here at Johnson & Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island is where talented, hard-working students come to learn both the art and science of food in this brand new state-of-the-art building. Classes are taught by top flight professionals such as Chef T.J. Donna, who knows what it takes to turn an eager student into a professional chef with a bright future. Today, I'm working with the best and brightest as we prepare one of the classic pasta dishes from Bologna, from start to very tasty finish. I can't wait to begin, and neither can they. Today, we're going to make a classic lasagne verde alla bolognese. And I know that some of you probably have made that before, but we're going to make it for the folks at home as well, OK? First of all, let's say that lasa it's lasagne, not lasagna. Lasagna is one sheet. So when you refer to lasagne in Italian, it's always in the plural. And we're making a specific lasagne today because we're using spinach for the noodles. So we have our spinach. You want about a third of a cup, as I say. We want to put three eggs in the machine. And we're going to put our spinach in with this and whirl this up. And we want a pinch un pizzico di sale, so just a pinch of salt. Get it smooth, and now we have our flour. So let's see what that looks like. All right, looks pretty good. So now we're going to add our flour. I have three and a half cups of flour in here, but I'm not gonna add all of the flour. I wanna add some of it just to see what I get for a dough. So let's put most of it in and save some out. So now we're going to put this back on again. This is very easy to do. Once you have made dough in a machine, well, it's very simple. And what you're looking for is this dough to go around the blade. This machine is taller than I am. <laughs> OK. flour down and I work this dough until it isn't sticking to my hands anymore. And just by doing this, I get the feel of what a pasta should feel like, a dough should feel like that is not sticky. We want to get that kneaded for about five minutes. We don't want to see any white flour left on the dough at all. That's it, with the palm of your hand turning a quarter. Turn, good, so remember, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. If you remember that, then you will turn the dough correctly. Wanna have a try? Come on, you're a Southern Italian, you can have a try. <laughs> Give it a try. Anybody have any questions about this? Who knows what we need to do next? We need to let it rest, exactly. Now, you know, when I was growing up, my Neapolitan grandmother made a lot of dough. She made a lot of ravioli. 
And she always told me that the dough had to sleep. That was what she said. The dough had to sleep. I never really understood that. And I don't think she really understood what she was actually doing by allowing the dough to sleep. But that meant that she was allowing the gluten that is in the flour to relax. Because if we tried to roll this out right now, we would have a devil of a time. Because the gluten in this needs to relax. You put the dough there. You take a bowl. You put it over the top. And you let that dough rest for 30 minutes. Here's our rested dough. 30 minutes later, we can now roll this out. So what I like to do is use small pieces at a time. Don't, I know people who've tried to actually roll all of this out in a pasta machine, and they've ruined the gears on the motor of the pasta machine. So I like to work in small pieces. So I'm going to cut this into four pieces. And as I work with one piece, I want to keep the other pieces covered so they do not dry out. So we want to flatten the dough first. Flatten it first because you don't want to put it through the machine without flattening it because, as I say, you could strip the gears on the machine. So I'm going to turn my machine on to the roller setting right here, not the cutter, but the roller, and put the pasta through. You want to thin it down. And you'll notice that it is rather stretchy. And what you don't want to do is roll it out so that it's wider than the width of the roller. So this is about five inches wide, but some of them are narrower. Some of them are four inches. It just depends on the make that you get. So as you thin it, It gets longer and longer and longer. One more, okay. It's getting longer and longer. And if you find it's difficult for you to work with a piece that long, you can always cut it in half. Doesn't this make a difference? So if you're going to be in the pasta business or you happen to make a lot of pasta, this is a, a good investment. Okay. That's very good. So now we have something that I can almost see my hand behind. Hmm? You want a thin sheet. And then you want to put that down. And just out of cardboard, you can make some templates. So get yourself a pasta wheel. And just cut yourself some pieces like that. You see? I'm going to let you cut a few. As you cut them, you want to put them on a towel. And don't use a towel like this. A fuzzy towel, you don't want to use because some of the fibers could end up on the pasta. You always want to use a cotton towel, OK? That's good to know, especially if your pasta is a little wetter than this. This is a fairly dry one. And you keep going until you have enough sheets to make a pan of a lasagna. Lasagna. Lasagna verde alla bolognese. All right, so now that's the pasta part. We still have to make the ragu. We still have to make the bechamel. So why don't you go to your stations, and let's get the rest of this put together. So for this ragu, we're using three kinds of meat. We're using ground veal, ground pork, and ground beef, a half a pound of each. And then we need pancetta for this. So this is pancetta. I'm sure you've worked with this before. This is Italian unsmoked bacon. It's from the belly of the pig. You often find it with peppercorns. And this is going to give a lot of nice flavor to the ragu. And then we need our aromatic vegetables for this, which are onions, celery, and carrots. We're going to mince this up. And this is going to become what is called a batuto, because batuto means to beat down. So we're making this into a mince, a very fine mince. With this, we are going to add some tomato paste, salt, pepper, red wine, 
or if you wanted to use white, you could, but red wine. And at the end, to finish it off and give it a really nice velvety texture, milk, or you could use cream. Here's the second sauce that's going to go with the lasagne verde a la bolognese. You're going to make the bechamela, which translates to a white sauce, cream sauce. And this is going to start with some unsalted butter. Italians always use unsalted butter and then salt as they go along. Flour in equal proportions. We have a half a cup of unsalted butter in bits and a half a cup of unbleached flour. So we want to melt the butter first. When the butter is melted, that's when you want to get your whisk ready. Put this back on now here. Get your whisk ready. Oops, put that down low. And you're going to whisk in the flour. So here's the flour. Here's your trusty whisk. And why don't you whisk that in slowly, a little bit at a time. What you want to do is avoid any lumps. Once all of the flour is in, we're going to add a little bit of salt to that. And then we're going to add milk. And it's really critical that when you add the milk, the milk already be hot. So it's up to temperature, so you don't bring down the temperature of what's in the pot if you were using cold milk. So it's really good to start with hot milk. And you're going to cook this until it's thick, thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. So it's almost like pancake consistency. Once you've got it to that consistency, and this only takes a few minutes, maybe three or four minutes to get it to this point, then we can add a little bit of nutmeg to it, a little bit of uh, grated nutmeg. It's not necessary to add the nutmeg, but a lot of uh, lasagne verde a la bolognese use it, so I like to put it in. So just a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. So you work on that, and I'm going to check on the ragu people. And that looks good. Yeah. When it's all very small, then we'll put it in the olive oil and get that going. OK, that looks very good. Excellent. You don't want it too thick. This piece here is just a little too short, but that's OK, because when you put it in the pan, you can patch. This is not going to be the kind of lasagne where when you cut it, it's a solid looking piece. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit more fluid because the noodles are thin. So it's not going to hold up as it's going to kind of slide on the plate a little bit. It's going to taste delicious. OK? All right, that's good. You did a great job with that. It's easy to do, right? Yeah. OK. OK, good. All right. And then with the scraps, you can just make a few of the, uh, the maltagliati. And we want to get this much softer. So you're going, to you're going to put the heat up a little bit on this and keep going until those vegetables are very, very soft. Then you can add the meat, OK? Everybody got that? Yes. OK, now while you're doing that, I'm going to go check on the tagliatelle people. We're going to make a basic pasta dough that you can do a number of things with. And we're going to make tagliatelle today. Taglia means to cut from tagliare. So to do it, we're going to do it on a board, preferably wood. And we're going to make what the Italians call the fontana, which means to put your flour on the board and then to burrow down into the center of it and make a hole. Kind of like Mount Vesuvius. In the hole, we put our eggs. So we're going to add, let's start with four eggs. These are rather small, so I'm going to, I may have to add a little bit more water. I just don't know yet. And then what we have to do is start adding the flour from the inside of this wall of flour into our egg mixture. All right, that looks good. So now, I usually only use one hand. I keep this hand here 
in case the wall breaks, but that's okay. Even if the wall breaks, if you're astute enough, you can get enough flour into it to get it into a rough mass. But I usually start right here, 12 o'clock, and I bring the flour in from the inside of the wall, the inside, mixing it carefully. Obviously, you could also do this in a food processor, but this is the classic way to do it. So you keep going around like this until you have enough flour in the center that you have a rough ball of dough. Now, I may not use all of this flour. It just all depends on how much these eggs are going to take. Give it a whirl just so you get the feel of it, bringing in enough flour, and mix it though with as you're going, mix it in with those eggs, that's it. Mixing it in. Kind of go in a circular motion, that's it. How's it feel? Have you ever made pasta this way before? No. Okay, well here's your, here's your chance now to shine. <laughs> and now, when you get to a point like that, you might want to start using a bench knife or a dough scraper to help you. So now you can kind of lift up the dough. Don't worry about your fingers, look at mine. <laughs> They're gonna stay that way. So now why don't you take a turn and go with the bench knife. First use your fingers and then you can use the bench knife. That's it. Keep going until you f feel that there's enough flour that your hands are not going to be all sticky. Keep going. If you want to use the bench knife, here it is. That's it. Okay. Uh, don't, don't add all that flour if you don't have to. Okay. Now you spent some time in Italy, I can tell. I did. <laughs> yes, I can tell by, by watching you that uh, you kind of have the knack of it. Very good. I made a good amount of pasta yeah, over there. Yeah. And was this the way you did it? Yeah, by hand. Mm -hmm. A mano. Tutto a mano. Si. Everything <laughs> by hand. And that's looking much better. We're going to cut this up and work with small pieces again. We're going to keep three of them covered on a little bit of under flour here so that they don't stick. Okay, so here is our first piece of dough. But what's nice about this is you see, you can see my hand. Can you see my hand behind there? That's a nice thin sheet of pasta. And I do think we should cut this in half, don't you? All right, otherwise we're going to be in the next room. You want to let these semi dry, so you put them right over your rods. You're not drying these completely because we have to cut this. And if you dried it completely, you would have nothing. It would be all, just all brittle. Now that we have them on the rod, the next thing you would do is either move your hand crank that you have in this hole, or if you have a, a trusty motor like this, you move it to the next hole which operates the cutters. Okay, and that's exactly what you want because you'll know that it's the right dryness because you see how these are not sticking together? If it was too wet to cut, these all be clumped together. So they're, they're very, very swingy, like a grass skirt. Why don't you work on the next sheet? I think this is perfect, ready to go. And we'll come back and sauce those later. Here are our noodles. We've blotted them dry now. And now we're going to put them into a buttered lasagna pan. So here's a nine by 12 lasagna pan. We've just buttered it. And the first thing we want to do is put down a thin layer of that beautiful bechamel sauce that we made. So that goes down first. 
and you just want to spread that around. You don't want to really put too much sauce. You just want a little bit in the bottom. That's just to help prevent the noodles from sticking. And you can overlap them. You may not need six, depending on the size of your pan. This one's only going to take four. So you want to get about five layers. Another layer of the bechamel over the top. And just spread that very lightly. A lasagna like this, as I said earlier, does not have thick, thick layers of ingredients. Very thin layers. And we're going to spread that very thinly. Then we're going to add this. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, the real Parmesan cheese of the region that we've been cooking from, Emilia Romagna. Cow's milk cheese, often called the king of cheeses. And we grated it. Here it is. We're going to give that a little sprinkling. So this lasagna is very different than what, than what most people are used to with the thick layers of ricotta cheese and mozzarella. And now I think you have the idea, and I'm going to let you finish. Once you have it all together, we're going to put a piece of foil over the top of it. We're going to bake it, and then we're going to take the foil off the last 10 minutes. We don't want it to be really crusty brown. We just want it to have a nice little golden color over the top. Make sure the water's boiling. What did we make today, class? Lasagna verde alla bolognese, Italia Perfetto. Aren't they great? Yes, we did. We went all the way to Bologna today, and we made the classic lasagna of that famous city called lasagna Verdi alla Bolognese, because we used green spinach noodles. And after we made them, we made two sauces, a typical ragu sauce, and we made a white sauce called a bechamella. And then we put the lasagna together. And believe me, when you eat this, it's light as a feather. And then we made regular pasta dough with just unbleached flour, eggs, and a little bit of salt. And we cut it into the tagliatelle shape. And here we combined it with the ragu sauce. A great wine to go with these dishes would be a Chianti Classico Riserva. Chin chin. Chin chin. And until I see you nella cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. And I'm TJ Deladon. Ciao! Marianne shares the secrets of three generations of Italian cooks with Ciao Italia Family Classics. Filled with over 200 authentic recipes from Mary Ann, her mother, and grandmothers, this fully illustrated cookbook is available in the fall of 2011, wherever books are sold and on the web. Learn more about the culture and cuisine of Italy's many regions and prepare many of their unique recipes by visiting Mary Ann at her website, ciaoitalia.com. I, like I like to look up because many times you're just looking at the gelateria or you're looking at what these shops have to offer, but you're not looking up. And if you look up, you see beautiful things, like, for instance, right here. This doorway with this nice coat of arms over the top. I'm not quite sure who that would have been. I would get, have to get a guide to tell me, but isn't that a beautiful doorway? It's gorgeous. See what I mean about looking up? Look at that porch. There's also something very special here in Cortona. When I was here a few years ago, I, uh, I lived at a place called Brahma Sole, and you probably recognize the name because it was the home of Frances May. She wrote this book, Under the Tuscan Sun. And before she wrote the book, I lived in her home for a month, rented it, and it was called Brahma Sole. 
And every day I would come downtown, I would meet with the people who sold fruits and vegetables, I would buy my pasta, and they got to know me. And it was a great way to experience Italy, living like an Italian. It's a good way to learn Italian. I'm telling my friend, come here. Oh, yeah, I'm my sorry. friend Joe. We're just looking at these calendars. You know, this is a great thing to bring home when you're looking for Italian gifts to bring home. But look, you could learn Italian words related to food by getting a calendar that says Cucina. Isn't that a good idea? I'm going to come back and I'm going to get one of these. And I think you should pay for it Very for lovely. Me. Yeah. Very lovely. No, not worth, yeah. worth that lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Verdi. Not Verde. Verdi. Think of the, think of the composer. Verdi. Verdi. Lasagne Verdi alla bolognese e tagliatelle. A, A. He's like A in Italian. A. Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by... In Norwich, we sure like to bake. It's the home of King Arthur Flour, and we believe in baking with only the finest all-natural ingredients. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. <laughs>